this committee here? Good afternoon. I'm Ariel Bowser. I represent Ward 4 in the Council of the District of Columbia, and I chair the Committee on Economic Development. I'm calling to order this markup of the committee. Today is Thursday, May 15th, 2014, and it's 1.30. We are located in the Council Chambers in the historic John A. Wilson Building at 1350 Pennsylvania Avenue. At this time, I would like the, to recognize the presence of all members of the committee including um, Councilmember Jack Evans, Councilmember Anita Bonds, Councilmember Vincent Orange, and Councilmember Kenyon McDuffie. Today, the committee will review and vote on the report and recommendations of the Committee on Economic Development on the fiscal year team um, budget for agencies under its purview. Those agencies include the Office um, of the Deputy Mayor for Planning and Economic Development, the Department of Housing and Community Development, the Office of Cable Television, the Washington Metropolitan Area Transit Authority, the District of Columbia Housing Authority, and the Office of, of Housing Finance. A copy of the committee report was circulated yesterday, and, and you have um, a only slightly revised version before you. I want to start off by summarizing the highlights of the operating and capital budgets for some of the agencies um, in the committee's purview, as well as a few of the Budget Support Act subtitles. First, the Office of Deputy Mayor for Planning and Economic Development, often called DEMPED, is charged with ex executing the Mayor's Economic Development Strategy which encourages growth investments uh, and investments across the district. The office's strategy is centered on three priorities, attracting business, revitalizing neighborhoods, and creating jobs. The mayor's proposal is a gross funds budget for, has a, is, includes a gross funds budget for DEMPED at $37 million. The committee proposes an increase of $5.1 million. The increase is attributable to the following transfers. The committee recognizes $5 million from the Committee on Health um, to provide a one-time grant to provide renovations to the William Fitzgerald Tennant Center. The Tennant Center is nearly 50 years old and in need of immediate repairs. Um, this uh, transfer was initiated by the Committee on uh, Health, and it will help the, the Fitzgerald Tennant Center sustain uh, the City Open uh, Tennis Classic that happens there every year, uh, which has a $27 million economic impact on the District of Columbia. The committee also accepts a transfer of $1.2 million from the Committee on Health to be used by the Office of the Deputy Mayor to sustain and maintain a 100% affordable housing project in Ward 7, supporting um, the former residents of Lincoln Heights and the New Communities Initiative. The committee recognizes is $150,000 transferred from the Committee on Finance and Me Revenue for the Earned Income Tax Credit Education. The um, EITC program is a special tax break based on the federal EIT designed specifically for low and moderate income workers. The grant will be provided to community organizations to support efforts to assist eligible residents in applying for the credit. The committee also recognizes a transfer of $800,000 from the Committee on Finance and Revenue um, in 2016 to fund emerging neighborhood business demonstration districts. This initiative will provide seed money to groups organized to generate economic development and commercial corridors. I'm particularly happy about this initiative. It's a great need for it in emerging business corridors, especially um, in commercial corridors east of the river. I'd like to acknowledge and thank Mr. Evans for keeping a promise and finding um, this money in the economic, uh, in the finance and revenue committees. Let me say a word about Workforce Investment Council. Um, so other than these changes, the committee adds one position at the Workforce Investment Council. Each year, district agencies expend $100 million on workforce development programs, um, yet we see few measurable outcomes or reporting among these agencies. A new employee will be charged with developing a cross-agency plan for connecting basic skills programs to career 
career pathways. Uh, the new employee can help set shared citywide priorities and identify opportunities for alignment and collaboration between the district's education, workforce, and human services providers. This position is funded by a reduction in FTE authority at the Office of Cable Television. And I want to thank um, Councilmember Grosso for working with us um, in these important workforce development issues. Let me um, say a few things about major projects in the Deputy Mayor's uh, purview. First, Walter Reed. The Walter Reed project is moving along. A new fire station will break ground in the next year, and we are hopeful that the remainder of the 65 acres at the former Walter Reed site that the district will have access to will be conveyed sometime in late 2014 or 20. 15. Um, the mayor's proposal includes and we accept a new staff, staff position uh, to be added in October to manage this major project. Among the capital projects in this proposal um, include the McMillan Sand Filtration Site, uh, which will be redeveloped and will benefit from $40 million um, in capital funds. The St. Elizabeth Campus is a key project for economic development east of the river, um, and we uh, are continue to be happy to support this $26 million allotted for the development of that site. The new communities initi initiative continues to be funded and will receive $80.5 million over, um, a, over a several year time frame to invest in the, uh, in the construction of um, new communities in the District of Columbia. I'm happy also to see that to date um, no one can be happy with the number of units that are, have been constructed so far with the new communities initiative and we will spend the remainder of this year in the coming years making sure that those timelines are adjusted and the proper investments made. Let me say a word about the debt cap. Um, we have described just in the economic development portfolio very necessary projects, and there are bigger projects looming on the horizon. Unfortunately, the rate at which we have been spending on roads, development projects, bridges, recreation centers, schools, has put our ability to borrow for other big projects um, in, in a troubling position. Uh, we will hit the debt cap in 2018. Recognizing the importance of looking to new capital financing tools as the district moves forward, I introduced with uh, Council Member David Grasso, Bill 20-595, the Public-Private Partnership Act of 2013. As law, this act would facilitate the procurement and administration of public-private partnerships in the district and create the systems and infrastructure needed to ensure the success of these partnerships in the future. We need to be concerned about the debt cap, and I think that P3s are one, just one tool that will help us continue to make and meet our promises regarding new infrastructure in the District of Columbia. Let me say a word about the Department of Housing and Community Development. The P Department of Housing and Community Development, also called DHCD, is the district's primary agency for creating and preserving affordable housing. It does this by financing projects, acquiring vacant and blighted properties for redevelopment, and administering several grant and assistance programs for residents and businesses in the district. The agency enforces important DC laws regarding inclusionary zoning, rent control, and condominiums. DHCD's FY14 operating budget is proposed to be $188 million, uh, which is a 49.2% decrease from last year. DHCD has 159 FTEs. I should say the proposal for 15 is 188 million. The Home Purchase Assistance Program. Um, last year, I was pleased to support an increase of $1 billion to the mayor's uh, proposal. Uh, we know that the HPAP program en enables lower and moderate income individuals and families to purchase affordable housing in the District of Columbia. 
qualified HPAP applicants can receive up to $40,000 in financial assistance to purchase single-family houses, condos, and cooperatives. The committee sees great value in this program, so it is including an additional $300,000 for FY15. The committee also increases the maximum loan amount from $40,000 to $50,000 by way of a new BSA title. Uh, a word about the Lead Safe Single Family Residential Rehab Program. The Lead Safe and the Single Family Residential Rehab Program offers grant and loans to qualified homeowners to make much needed repairs that they could not otherwise afford. This is an important tool to keep people in their homes, thus preserving the affordable housing stock in the District of Columbia. That said, the committee has real concerns as to whether DHCD is capable of getting these dollars out the door from year to year. At our budget and performance oversight hearings, we've heard complaints from residents about the challenges and delays associated associated with applying for these programs, um, and the data bears this out. In FY14 so far, expenditure rates for the lead safe and single family rehab programs are well behind where they should be more than halfway through the year. 95% of the funds are still available. In FY13, we saw a similarly um, dismal expenditure rate. As such, the committee reduces the Let's Save program by $5.8 million. That same amount is transferred as follows. 4.1 will be used to provide affordable housing to seniors through the Housing Production Trust Fund. Seniors are especially vulnerable to rising housing costs, and it's my hope that this money will help many seniors continue um, to live right here in the District of Columbia. $1.5 million will be used to fund the Rapid Rehousing Program, particularly these additional funds will provide stable, semi-permanent housing that gives homeless individuals a boost so that they too can become self-sufficient. Lastly, $200,000 will be used to study the need for affordable housing for GLBTQ seniors. Uh, GLBTQ seniors are four times less likely than their straight counterparts to have children or grandchildren to support them and are twice as likely to live alone. Many LGBTQ seniors also have trouble as accessing spousal benefits because they were never married or entered a domestic partnerships or their relationships were not recognized by governments or employers. Despite considerable progress in protecting the civil rights of GLBTQ residents, there's still more that we can do, um, and we know that we must look to the area of housing. Um, and this study will help us um, hit the ground running next year with other ideas. The Housing Production Trust Fund is the district's primary vehicle for funding affordable housing projects and programs. Since 2001, it has funded the construction or renovation of more than 6,800 units of affordable housing. Because the HPTF is such a successful tool, the committee was heartened by the significant increase allocated in FY 2014. Unfortunately, that increased level of spending has not been sustained in 2015, in which there will be a approximately $40 million in dedicated tax revenue and $30 million in surplus funds carried over for 2014 and deposited in the Housing Production Trust Fund. The commitment to producing more affordable housing is lacking. That is why the committee is considering legislation I introduced that would dedicate a baseline annual funding investment of $100 million to the Housing Production Trust Fund. Let me say a word about the Office of Cable Television. Um, the Office of Cable Television is the district government agency responsible for regulating um, cable television in D.C. as well as the administration of the district's government access channels. That's TV13, the District of Columbia Network, and the district's education access channel the di and the district knowledge network. The mayor's proposed special, um, special purpose budget is $9.5 million, which represents an increase of $1.1 million. This budget supports 39 employees, which is um, the same as the previous year. 
OCT is funded entirely by the cable franchise fees. That is, it's funded by fees charged to cable providers uh, for the right to operate in the District of Columbia. Um, the committee noticed that over the past years, the Office of Cable Television has been over budgeted by um, nearly $2 million. In FY13, the budget was over $8 million, but the agency spent $6 million. In FY13, the difference between the budget authority and actual spending was $2.6 million. Um, because of this trend, the committee has identified $1.8 million in fund balance from FY13 that will be better used um, in other ways. As such, the committee directs the same amount as follows. $300,000 to the Home Purchase Assistance Program, $500,000 for emergency rental assistance, $500 for the Community Schools Program, and $500,000 to restore funding to the Film Incentive Fund. Um, let me say a word about work that remains for the Office of Cable Television. Um, the district is involved in cable television services because cable companies rent space on public property for their transmission lines. The terms of these arrangements are embodied in the cable franchise agreements, which Octo is currently negotiating with Comcast and RCN. The existing agreements have already been extended twice, and the committee is concerned that an another extension may be necessary. Nevertheless, OCT's executive director has committed to concluding the negotiations by the end of this month, and the, co the committee intends to hold him um, to that uh, promise. Um, the OCT is moving to a new headquarters, um, and the new headquarters will be located in Ward 5 in the former um, black entertainment television space in that area. Finally, for OCT, I'll say a bit about community outreach. So during the committee's oversight hearings, I've noted that many residents of the district complain about the high cost of cable bills and, suggest, and suggested OTC, OCT begin public education campaigns. This way, customers will understand what services they are paying for and will be better able to determine which packages work best for their families and their budgets. I further suggested that OCT target their outreach efforts to senior homes where many residents do not realize that they are paying for services that they're not using and being oversold. So I look forward to OCT's improved outreach and education efforts in FY15. The committee is also responsible for oversight of the Washington Metropolitan Area Transit Authority. The mission of WAMATA is to operate and maintain a safe, reliable, and effective transit system that enhances mobility, improves the quality of life, and stimulates economic development in the Washington area. Metro, of course, is the region's primary provider of bus, rail, and paratransit services. Its 12,500 employees provide more than 1.1 million trips per day and a total of 350 million trips per year. This year, WMATA has an operating budget of $1.8 billion and a capital budget of more than $1 billion. The district will contribute more than $435 million to subsidize WMATA which is larger than most agencies of the D.C. government. <laughs> WMATA, of course, is embarked on a multi-million and multi-year um, investment in the state of good repair and a multi-year and multi-billion dollar investment in Metro Momentum. Kids Ride Free, uh, in addition to uh, major expansions um, in investments in momentum in the state of good repair programs at WMATA, um, the Kids Ride Free program um, has been a, a great success. I introduced legislation last year to create the Kids Ride Free program, which provides free bus service to district youth to travel to and from school and for other extracurricular activities. It's been a huge success with student ridership doubling and more kids getting to school on time while saving their families money on transportation costs. A handful of routes serving schools like Deal Middle School, Duke Ellington, and the KIPP DC were so popular that we needed to add more service. I'm happy to report that DDOT has budgeted $250,000 for that reason. So we look forward to seeing expanded programs in the future. 
At the same time, there are other populations that also want access to the Kids Right Free program. We've added the district's foster youth population starting in FY 2015 and will also include participants in the Summer Youth Employment Program or the SYEP program. SYEP is a six-week internship for district youth ages 14 to 21 in which they gain important job experience and skills. We'll let them ride the bus for free for the first three weeks of the program. This is before they've collected their first paycheck, and we want to make sure they get to orientation and work on time and get the most out of the experience. To fund um, this program, the committee accepts $731,000 from the Committee on Transportation, and we thank Councilmember Che um, for finding um, those, those dollars. Uh, the District of Columbia Housing Authority. The District of Columbia Housing Authority is devoted to providing quality, affordable housing to low-income households, fostering sustainable communities, and cultivating opportunities for residents to improve um, their lives. The Mayor's FY 2014 proposed local fund subsidy for, DH, for DCHA is $42.96 million, which represents a 10.3% increase from FY 2014. In 2007, the local rent supplement program was created to provide rental assistance to families who earn no more than 30 percent of area media income. To date, LRSP has provided housing for over 2,000 households in the District of Columbia. In FY 2015, approximately $31.8 million is allocated for the LRSP. So I'm pleased to report that this amount includes an additional $3 million, which will be enough to provide um, uh, the LRSP to an additional 200 families. The proposed FY 2015 budget also includes an additional $1 million to support tenant-based LRSP, which will assist 80 low-income seniors with affordable housing opportunities in D.C. That while the proposal includes several much-needed subsidy increases, I'm concerned that the funding is insufficient to address the immediate de demand-side affordable housing challenges in the district. Housing advocates have noted that the program needs as much as $10 million more million per year, and I will be looking for ways um, during the coming days to increase the overall subsidy amounts. The Budget Support Act and local um, rent supplement sustainment. So uh, let me talk a bit about those. The committee recommends the withdrawal of Title II, Subtitle I of the FY 2014 Budget Support Act which would require DCHA to fill all new and vacated LRSP vouchers through referrals from the Department of Human Services based on assessments. Numerous affordable housing and anti-homeless advocates, including the DC Fiscal Policy Institute, the Coalition for Nonprofit Housing and Economic Development, and the Washington Legal Clinic for the Homeless, requested that this subtitle be withdrawn because it unnecessarily hinders DCHA's ability to target vouchers to those most in need. The committee concurs and recommends withdrawal of the subtitle. New Communities. As I mentioned earlier, the New Communities Initiative is a comprehensive public-private partnership to, uh, intended to improve the quality of life for families and individuals living in um, several uh, housing authority communities. However, during two hearings that I held last year, the committee learned that progress at these sites has lagged behind schedule and that the details of the demolition and relocation remain murky. Since those two hearings, DEMPED has commissioned a report to study the feasibility of the new communities initiative as it's currently organized. The committee looks forward to receipt of that report as well as a new feasible timeline for completion of these projects. On the Housing Finance Agency, the District of Columbia Housing Finance Agency was established in 1979 to support and expand home ownership and rental housing opportunities for low to moderate income residents of D.C. The HFA accomplishes this by issuing mortgage revenue bonds, which in turn lower the home buyer's expenses of purchasing homes as well as the developer's cost of developing new affordable housing units. The HFA is a corporate instrumentality with a legal existence separate from the government of the District of Columbia. It is entirely self-supporting 
supporting and none of the proposed budget funds are derived from District of Columbia revenues. Um, the HFA proposed budget is $9.6 million, which represents a $27,000 decrease, $27, decrease from the previous year. The committee makes no changes um, but commends the work of the agency on increasing home ownership across D.C. and encourages the agency to continue implementing relevant recommendations contained in the Comprehensive Housing um, Strategy Task Force. So with that summary, I would like to move the operating and capital budget section of the report um, and open the floor for any discussion. Is there any discussion? Discussion? Yeah, Mr. Orange? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, I just want to applaud you and your staff for all the fine work that you have been able to achieve in producing uh, this fiscal year 2015 uh, committee budget report. Uh, you certainly have uh, touched a lot of areas that really need to be touched uh, with this uh, budget and um, look forward to 2015 uh, coming here so we can bring a lot of this to uh, fruition. So I just wanted to acknowledge that for the record, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Orange. Is there any further discussion? Discussion, Ms. Uh, Bonds? Yes, th <clears throat> thank you, Chairman uh, Bowser. And thank you very much for your work and the work of your um, committee staff. I want to uh, highlight and applaud the budget consideration to transfer the funds to affordable housing projects, financing the development of affordable housing for our seniors, and also to look at best ways to develop housing for our aging LGBT um, population. As you know, as people continue to retire and age with grace in the District of Columbia, there is an increasing need for services. And um, I think that this budget plan begins to address those um, sort of hidden needs that we haven't addressed in um, years past. Similarly, I want to echo your recommendation to DHCD to purchase blighted properties to increase our affordable housing stock. That is something that I feel very strongly we must do. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention is that I was amazed at learning of the vast amount of vacant properties that we have um, in the District of Columbia, currently somewhere around 5,000 households that can be converted to affordable housing. So I'm very hopeful with this uh, budget plan that you're putting forth. And again, thank you very, very much. I think this is in the interest of the District of Columbia um, as you move forward and as we begin to address the um, continuous need for housing in the District of Columbia. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and let me just state for the re for the record um, that that we would in leaving the staff room to adjust the report include um, a discussion about making up the difference between what is uh, the the portion of the affordable housing monies that is um, solely directed to HPTF um, be increased to a hundred million dollars. And also, um, I've had discussions uh, with Council Member McDuffie about a New York Avenue retail area that will leave um, for the staff to uh, make adjustments in, uh, in, our, in our discussions over the next several days. Um, if there's no further discussion, um, I move, I've already moved that. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Um, and uh, I'll report uh, to the whole committee that uh, we have a unanimous recommendation from this committee. So now I would like to move the BSA subtitle section of the report um, and open the floor for any discussion, discussion, discussion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Then the ayes have it. Um, the budget office has requested that each of the committees move the reports in three sections, including the Budget Request Act. Um, the committee's recommendations to the VRA have already been discussed, and I um, put uh, and I, I move um, those for your consideration as well. Is there any discussion? 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 All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Um, the ayes have it, and uh, we will report uh, three unanimous votes. Um, uh, to support um, the committee's uh, recommendations. 
Oh, I do need to move the committee report in its entirety, um, and I so move. Any discussion? 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 All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, the ayes have it. Uh, hearing no further business before the committee, uh, we have concluded our business for today, and I move to adjourn this meeting, and it's 159. All right, good job. Thank you.